So these options include paying electronically through the electronic federal tax payment system, otherwise known as the EFTPS system. You can pay with the direct pay by authorizing an electronic funds withdrawal when you file form 1040 or 1040 SR electronically. In other words, many times when you file the return, you're filing it with tax software these days and the tax software could possibly have the ability to do electronic transfers through it which will then basically require generally the routing number and account numbers you know for your bank so you can do an electronic transfer possibly that way paying by credit or debit card over the phone or by internet remembering that if you pay by credit or debit card i don't believe the irs charges you fees but your debit or credit card might so some kind of electronic transfer is probably you know the cheapest option or or a check if you still want to go uh that route so other options include crediting and overpayment from your 2022 return to your 2023 return or 2023 estimated tax or mailing a check or money order with form 1040 es payment voucher so notice the taxes are usually paid on a quarterly basis. That's when the IRS wants them. If, for example, we're talking about 2023, then we might have had an overpayment of 2022 where we had a business income schedule C. And then instead of having them give us the overpayment in the form of a refund, we said, hey, just roll it over to 2024 which would be equivalent then to them giving us the money and then we gave it right back to them. So instead of that, we just said, don't give me the money, just make it part of the estimated payments for 2024. And then we might make payments during 2024, payments which are usually scheduled and calculated based on and using the prior year tax software, which is, which is a system that works generally fairly well and can help us to hit like safe harbor requirements to hopefully avoid or minimize the chance that we get hit with those sticks metaphorically of the penalties and interest. The last payment, we have a cutoff situation because the last quarterly payment we might still make for 2023 in 2024. So that's where you have this cutoff situation. You're like, okay, I paid it on time, but the actual money went out in 2024 even though it was paid for tax year 2023. As a tax preparer, we have to be careful of those cutoffs. We have to look at the payments that were made in the beginning of the year and say, were these payments tied to 2022 or 2023? If we're using the same software, we can see the last year payment, if there was a refund, if it rolled into as an estimated payment for the current year of 2023. And we want to see if any payments were made after the end of the year in 2024, which were still applied to 2023. We can also often verify the payments that were made or were not made because the tax software is what created the tax payment schedules. And so we can try to say, were the payments actually made in accordance with the planned payments that were made based on the prior year tax software? Now, obviously, if you're uh, have a new client or you have a new business that's coming up uh, then you don't have the prior year to rely on to help you out with the calculating of the estimated tax payments and you you possibly have to do more planning as you have a new or unstable business one that changes one that you don't know what the revenue is going to be uh, from year to year month to month day to day 